As you learn about the narcissistic pattern, it's also wise to reflect on the much healthier alternatives. Now below, you're going to find a link to my new extensive course called Ready, Set, Connect. It addresses both the mindset and the skills involved in gratifying relationships, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. You know, it can be very disillusioning when you have been in a relationship with someone and sometimes for a very long time and over the course of time, that individual winds up being somebody that you really did not think that they were capable of being. You thought that they were a friend. You thought that they were a true ally in the cleanest sense of the word. And yet something might have happened that turned them on you and you were left just with uh, all sorts of mixed emotions. So there's so many times when I've heard people say something to the effect of, I thought we had something good going, but something happened in our relationship and wow, did it turn sour and, and I don't know what to do. And we might be talking about people that you've been friends with on a social basis or someone who's been a confidant with you. It might be someone that you've met at work and you re just gelled real well with them, or it may be that person you were married to or you've lived with or somebody that, that uh, has been in the same organization or social circumstances with you on, on teams with you or choirs and the sports organizations, things like that. The, uh, the characteristics that are necessary for long-term sustained friendships would include things like a genuine interest in who you are and availability and uh, a kind of a through thick and thin kind of a mindset as opposed to being fair weathered about it. Uh, good friends or people that are strong encouragers as opposed to just being uh, judgmental and critics. Uh, they want to be honest and there's a trustworthiness there. Uh, there's an availability that we maintain with one another, even in the midst of differences. And when you look at that, those are not ingredients that are, uh, are um, yeah, common with narcissists. Now, covert narcissists in particular can give the appearance of being that way, <clears throat> but over time, uh, the truth will rise to the surface and uh, that narcissistic bent can show up. Now, I wanna give you some illustrations of what I'm talking about, and then I wanna talk with you about what happens on the inside of a narcissist that causes them to, uh, to just not have true and real friendships. But uh, as an example, uh, I, I uh, remember one person saying, uh, I was told by a mutual acquaintance that a person that I thought was my closest friend was actually mocking me behind my back based on a mistake or a difficulty that I'd had. Another person uh, would say, well, there's a member in my extended family that had married into the family and there would be times when she'd be really nice and friendly and then something would happen and boom, she'd get mad. Go back to being nice and friendly and then something else would happen and boom, she would, she would just disappear and ghost you and stonewall and very erratic in the way that uh, she would be. It's like, I thought it was good, but uh, now there's this consistent inconsistency. Or somebody might say something like, uh, well, I had um, a family member who was awful to me. And then when I was actually telling my friend what I thought of my friend was uh, about it, uh, that friend of mine wound up picking up and uh, defending my family member and they'd not even met the family member. And it's like, well, I'm trying to tell you something of, a, uh, of an intimate nature here and you're just coming down on me. Or uh, you can, uh, so many people say, well, I thought uh, that I had a good friend and I learned that that person was a backstabber. They were doing things uh, to torment me behind my back and I, I didn't find out until it was way too late. When narcissists enter into friendships, there are two common ingredients that they bring with them. One is shallowness. Uh, they're not nearly as deep as, you, as they might want you to think in the, in the original times. And the other is utility. In other words, they have their relationship with you based on what kind of transactions they can have. And there are so many other ingredients that, that, that narcissists will bring to friendships uh, that ultimately will cause them to collapse and fall apart. For example, we know that narcissists are highly image conscious. They want to look good as opposed to being good. As long as they can uh, maintain the appearance, they're okay. 
uh, narcissists in uh, in their engagement with others have to be in control eventually. Now, at, uh, at first, they might uh, show themselves to be flexible, but over time, that control tendency will uh, show up every single time. They just can't stop themselves. They have an unnatural need for positive feedback, and so if they sense that you're not giving them as much as they think they deserve, then they're going to uh, come down on you or quit on you at some point. They're incapable of receiving input that might be uncomfortable or uh, that, uh, that, that, you, that you just don't want to hear. Uh, so instead, uh, they can make excuses or uh, they can blame or they can play the role of victim. Uh, narcissists cannot be wrong. <clears throat> and so as long as the two of you are uh, going along real swell and everything's just copacetic, they're fine. But if they get a hint that you think that they made a mistake or there was something wrong there, they can't manage that. Um, <clears throat> they have to have the final word. Over time, you realize they operate with an unspoken agenda about who you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to uh, play things out. As long as you're cooperative and if you're a friendly person, uh, then they're going to skip along just fine. Um, also, there's another interesting dynamic uh, that uh, they can bring with them. They can stay loyal toward you until something better comes along. And so it might be that they enjoy your company, but this person over here has some new shiny toys, if you will, or this person over here is connected to a different group of individuals. And it's like, see you later, nice knowing you. It's like, wow, I had no idea the loyalty went that shallow. Uh, these individuals <clears throat> are very willing to find out what your flaws are or what your needs are. And then eventually uh, they'll use it against you. We call that data gathering. They like maintaining an upper hand. They can come across as curious about you, but actually it's like, no, I, I like having the goods on people. And, and so eventually it's gonna show up. They listen, but then the, when they listen, what they'll do is they'll uh, hijack the conversations and throw in a lot of me too uh, kind of illustrations. Uh, you might say something like, well, I had a disappointment with a person at work and they'll say, yeah, that happened to me last week myself. And so they'll take off and, and over time it's like, you're not, you, you pretend to listen, but you're really all about you. Um, and, and by the way, they can be highly critical toward other individuals. And as uh, the confidant, they may share with you their criticisms, but eventually you find out that you're going to be the one on the critical list. Uh, they tend to, to have difficulty with the, the concept of vulnerability. Sometimes that narcissist may actually uh, uh, bring their walls down and go contrary to what they're normally like, and they may share something of a very vulnerable nature, and then later on they regret it. Other times they try to get you to be vulnerable and they won't show it. But any, any way you look at it, they have great difficulty finding balance with respect to vulnerability. Um, uh, with them, uh, honesty and openness is something that scares them. Uh, and basically they can be very judgmental, uh, whenever your humanity comes along or whenever there's are, are flaws or difficulties, you begin realizing that, uh, they don't hold you quite in the high regard that they allowed you to think, uh, up front. Narcissists are just users. Uh, they, they're with you because they think that you can prop them up and make them look good. Um, but when uh, the deeper you go into it, they don't really know and, and appreciate how to go into uh, complexities in your life and they don't pick up on nuances. Uh, they just simply want you to service them. And then frankly, they're going to be a little bit too hurt if you find yourself to be a little bit more independent. And by independent, you don't think the same as them. You don't have the same priorities. That offends them as opposed to them being able to, uh, to uh, be pleased on your behalf. So understand that, yes, it's very disappointing when you think that you had an ally, you think, you think that you had a, somebody that you could have a, an intimate type of conversation with, only to find out that there was uh, that shallowness and that utility uh, that they brought. Um, and you're going to need, when you begin realizing that's what you're dealing with, you're going to need to stick with the facts as opposed to letting your emotions run away with you. And you know the emotions are running with you when you use the phrase like, I can't believe. I can't believe that she would say that, or I can't believe he did this to me. Well, at some point it's like, okay, I guess I'm going to have to believe it. There it is right in front of me. And then that being the case, 
uh, you're going to have to decide what you can and cannot tolerate in a relationship uh, where that person's uh, supposed friendship or connection with you is, uh, is just based on their need of the moment as opposed to long-term depth that they bring to the equation. Um, I, speaking personally, I don't want to be close friends with people who are openly judgmental or who complain a whole lot or who have anger issues. Uh, and you know, cause maybe they don't have anger issues yet towards me, but it, it'll, it'll eventually happen. Or if the, the friendship requires a certain amount of secrecy, uh, make sure that you know what, uh, what you're looking for. And at the, the site of, uh, the opposites of that, that's when it's time for you to make some adjustments. You know, uh, unfortunately, um, when, uh, when, uh, narcissists show themselves to being very different and incapable of maintaining their loyalty, you're going to need that toward you. You're going to need to learn to protect yourself. And sometimes I've even talked with some people who have that strong loyalty. It's like, well, I need to give them the benefit of the doubt and I need to hang in there with them. And at some point, uh, it's not good for you to be loyal towards someone who will be disloyal and fickle and, uh, 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 denigrating about you behind your back. Uh, you can be civil, yes. You can be decent, yes. But uh, make sure that you don't require yourself to to continue to give into relationships when it's not going to be reciprocated. Uh, friendships require mutuality. Now, ultimately, what this tells us is, and, and this is just common sense anyway, you're going to have a small number of people who are going to be on your ultimate, what I call level one uh, circle of friendships, where you can share anything and everything, and you know that it's going to be there, and it's going to be uh, for a, a long duration there. And many other individuals can be, you know, some that you can have some good connections with. And then there's some folks, it's like you just need to have a sense of friendliness. And if you share experiences with them, that's fine. But you don't want to go too deep into that vulnerable uh, position with individuals who don't know how to do that. Um, <clears throat> primary to relationships, I mentioned uh, some of the characteristics. There's a few more. Trustworthiness, I mentioned the word mutuality, non-judgmental, open to your needs. Those are characteristics that narcissists cannot sustain over a long period of time, but I'm hoping those would be characteristics that are foundational to who you are. Stay true to what you know is wise and best, and then accept what you see in front of you and make your plans accordingly. I hope videos such as this can give you some awareness of what you might be dealing with. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. We're going to keep more videos coming in your direction. I hope that there's a good cumulative experience with your education uh, regarding that. Likewise, when you have something like this, uh, it might be good for you to seek out some therapy. I know sometimes the emotions can run high and the disillusionment and the fallout can be strong. If you have that need, I've been sponsored for years by the people at BetterHelp.com. It's an online therapy resources, and uh, and plenty of folks have uh, have received good help. Uh, thinking it's good to have somebody that I can actually talk this thing out with, and they can help and assist me. If that's a need, we have a link below that will take you directly to their website. Please get the therapy that you need if that's the case. Also, I have my uh, my. Um, classes that you can sign up for. It's like online uh, courses that you can have. Each one has at least 25 videos. Each video has written documentation with guided questions. Very extensive, a lot of work that you could put into it. And, uh, and uh, they take in a guided direction. We have uh, Ready, Set, Connect about having the right kind of connections. This is me about establishing your boundaries. Free to be, being who you are despite the controllers. We've, I've present, presented webinars. They're now available on my website. Uh, along with articles, our, uh, access to our podcast, my books, lots of resources. I know if you're the kind of person that wants to love and, and be an encourager and be somebody that's available for uh, those when they're, they're in need, it's, it's disillusioning when that person uh, proves to be not at all willing to go into that space. But like I say, when you see it, and, uh, believe it for what it is, take it for what it is and make your adjustments and then stay committed to what you know is wisest and best. Because ultimately, when you have your integrity in place, that's when you're going to have your uh, long-term sense of peace.